Right, just hear me out. What if everything you knew about sharks was about to get turned completely upside down? We know there's more than 500 different species of sharks swimming around in our oceans, from the school bus sized whale shark to the tiniest deep sea pocket sharks. They're one of the most diverse groups of animals on the planet. But are they about to get even more diverse than they already are? Well, maybe, because there's a growing body of evidence that sharks are starting to hybridize with each other in the wild. You know, like a pizzly bear or a narluga. Yeah, both of those things actually exist. As to exactly why this is happening though, scientists are still trying to figure it out. So come with me today as we look into the shark species that are hybridizing with each other. We'll look into how they're able to do it and we'll figure out why it's even happening in the first place. Welcome back to another Shark Bites episode, everyone. I'm sure that loads of you will have heard about hybrid animals before. I think the ones that I remember learning about at school were things like a liger, which is a lion and a tiger, and then a zonkey, which is a zebra and a donkey. Although those two examples that I've given you there are almost exclusively captive examples, as in the only way that they managed to cross in the first place was because they were being kept in a zoo or maybe an animal sanctuary and they probably wouldn't have crossed paths in the wild. Examples of wild hybridization though I think is even cooler. Pizzly or Grola bears are an example of this where the two different species range has started to overlap into what we now call hybrid zones. In this situation the polar bears started to head further south for food and then the grizzly bears started heading further north due to warming temperatures and so their range begins to overlap and you get genetic mixing between the two of them. A 2017 study found four hybrid pizzly bears, which then went on to mate with other grizzly bears, creating another generation that contained both polar and grizzly DNA. And it looks like this genetic mixing isn't just exclusively happening to land-based animals, it's happening in the ocean as well. Different shark and ray species are now being identified as hybrids all around the world, and it's got scientists a little bit confused. But how is it even possible in the first place? Because don't hybrid animals end up being sterile, aka they can't reproduce? Well, not always. It turns out that hybrid speciation, as in the creation of a new viable species due to the mixing of two different ones is actually fairly common in the natural world. Our advancements in DNA analysis in the 1990s basically shone a light on it and revealed that it was happening way more than we thought it was. Now there's a bunch of different reasons as to why wild animals might hybridize with one another, but one of the outcomes sometimes is an improvement to that species. Hybridization can introduce new genes into a population which then creates a greater level of genetic diversity and it means they might be more resistant to certain diseases. It's no good if you're genetically all the same and then a new disease comes along and just wipes all of you out. So it's handy to have a good amount of genetic diversity within a population whereby some individuals might survive that new disease and go on to pass their disease resistant genes to the next generation. Hybrids might also have better environmental tolerance and can deal with change better than their genetically different parents. Which is all the more important in a world where the environment is changing as we speak. For example, temperature increases via climate change. More on that later though. And if like in those two examples that I've just given you there, the hybrid ends up being an improvement on the parental lineage, natural selection might end up favoring the hybrid, especially when the parent species had sufficiently similar genetic material to each other to create a hybrid which was reproductively viable, as in fertile. That's just one of the ways we can end up with a completely new species. There's lots of different ways to be fair, like geographic isolation or mutation, but hybridization is absolutely a viable method for speciation, and it's probably happening way more commonly than we think it is, especially in the shark world. To my knowledge, the first shark hybrid that scientists became aware of was in East Australia nearly 15 years ago. During a routine survey of Australian marine life, the scientists managed to find 57 sharks that physically resembled one type of shark species, but had genetic markers that were consistent with another related, but genetically distinct species. The two species in question here were the Australian black tip shark, Carcharanus tilstoni, and the common black tip shark, Carcharanus limbatus. On first glance, it doesn't really seem that these two shark species would be that different. They're both black tip sharks after all. But there are key differences between them morphologically and genetically. Australian black tip sharks are smaller and as you might expect are only found in Australia, specifically northern and eastern Australia. You won't find them anywhere else in the world. Whereas the common black tip shark is larger and much more widely distributed around the world's tropical and subtropical oceans. So these two genetically distinct sharks mated together and created a hybrid, of which some have said is a super combo of the two. The black tip hybrid hybrids are larger than their parent lineages, presumably taking some of that large sized DNA from the common black tip parent. But the hybrids are also capable of living in waters that are slightly cooler. The Australian black tip lineage is mainly restricted to tropical waters, but these hybrids are now pushing down further south on that east coast of Australia. And it turns out they may even now be outcompeting their purebred parent lineage in the southern part of their range. If that's truly the case, then the hybrid might have ended up with advantageous genes and via the process of natural selection, they might start 
start to become more common in future generations. A similar situation is also happening along the western coast of the Americas in the tropical Pacific Ocean. Galapagos sharks and dusky sharks are morphologically similar to each other, but genetically distinct shark species. They're so hard to tell the difference between that visually you can only really rely on the dorsal fin height. But if you're really wanting to be precise about it, you'd have to genetically test them or count their precordal vertebrae. Galapagos sharks have between 103 and 109 of these vertebrae, whereas dusky sharks have less, somewhere between 86 and 97. Recent genetic studies have clearly demonstrated the two as genetically distinct species using both mitochondrial DNA and single nucleotide polymorphisms, SNPs. Both of those sound confusing as hell, but they're basically just genetic markers that help scientists distinguish between different species. Both Galapagos sharks and dusky sharks have a global distribution, although you could say Galapagos sharks are a bit more patchily distributed. But in the areas where these two sharks range overlaps within that hybrid zone that we spoke about earlier, scientists have in the last five or six years or so started to see hybrids form between the two species. And that hybridization is genetically flowing both ways and they're able to back cross with each other, which essentially means the new hybrid shark could either mate with a purebred Galapagos shark or a purebred dusky shark and still produce viable offspring, mixing their genes even more. God, all this gene crossing stuff is actually hurting my brain. I was rubbish at genetics back when I was studying, so it takes me a minute to get my head around it. Looking at some more examples then, there's evidence of it happening in manta rays between the giant manta and the reef manta, and more evidence of it happening in hammerheads as well, between the Carolina hammerhead and the scalloped hammerhead. And there's even the mysterious example of the hybrid great white shark found in the Bermuda Triangle that's a mix between the Indo-Pacific white sharks and the North Pacific white sharks. And I imagine like many people, you're probably asking if it's a mix between the Indo-Pacific white sharks and the North Pacific white sharks, what the hell is it doing there? Give this video a like and let me know in the comments for a video on that, by the way. Anyway, because of the widespread, albeit slightly sporadic evidence of hybridization in sharks, the chances that it's happening across lots of different shark species is actually relatively high. We just haven't noticed it or been able to scientifically prove it yet. In a video I did a few months back, there was some good debate in the comments about the identification of a shark in a clip that I was reacting to. In my reaction, I thought it was a juvenile bull shark, although some people thought it looked like a grey reef shark. But the debate reminded me about some thoughts that me and some other scientists had had about bull sharks and reef sharks potentially hybridizing with each other. In the past, I've reviewed hours and hours of bruv footage from Caribbean waters, and I've seen a few examples of individual sharks where I've thought it might be a hybrid between a bull shark and a Caribbean reef shark. Annoyingly, I don't have access to the video file for you now, but I do have some screenshots. And looking at this shark here, a few of us at the time thought it could easily be a bull shark. It's got the blunt square head and the positioning of the dorsal fin is about right, although in the end we settled on Caribbean reef shark. It got us thinking at the time though, there could potentially be some form of hybridization between those two species. They are genetically similar species in that Carcharinid family and their range does overlap with each other in the Caribbean. Bull sharks don't exclusively mate in estuaries either, a habitat where a Caribbean reef shark just couldn't go. They have also been known to mate in bays and shallow inshore reefs. Although as to whether they're genetically similar enough to produce viable fertile hybrids is another question. I'd have loved to have had the opportunity to get a skin sample from that particular shark though, just to see. I'm keen though to see how many of you shark identification enthusiasts out there would look at that screenshot there and say either bull or Caribbean reef shark. Make sure you let me know in the comments. But based on how little we know about this phenomenon in sharks, it's not impossible. Perhaps unlikely, but definitely not impossible. Now the question that we haven't answered so far here is why? Why are sharks hybridizing with one another? Back when the black tip hybrid sharks were discovered in 2012, the research itself got a load of media attention. Although unfortunately in typical mainstream media fashion, the science got a little bit misconstrued. Some papers wrote at the time that the black tip sharks were intentionally hybridizing with each other to protect themselves from climate change in the future. Now, while that might be a little line of thinking there, it's not exactly true to claim that because that's not how evolution works. Evolution isn't goal oriented and the sharks aren't sensing the rising water temperatures and thinking to themselves, oh, well, we've got to go and mate with that other shark species because we'll have a better chance of survival. It's just so unlikely that the black tips would have the foresight to know the outcome for their offspring. Besides, that particular study showed the hybrids had a better tolerance to more temperate waters, not warmer waters. So the thought process that they're adapting to climate change doesn't really check out. But it might mean though is that those new hybrid black tip sharks have a wider temperature tolerance than their parents and that eventually might prove to be more advantageous in a changing ocean. Although I'm hoping that you can see the difference between that and the sharks are preempting climate change which is what those newspapers tried to claim. There's also another thought process though that overfishing is perhaps causing hybridization. For example mating with a different species is better than not mating with a member of your own species. Overfishing might have caused population declines in these species so much that the sharks have now resorted to mating with members of different species 
to try and pass on their genes. Now, I have to say it's an interesting hypothesis, although one that has no scientific evidence to back it up. To my knowledge, there's no evidence out there that sharks are struggling to find members of their own species to mate with. Lots of them have mating aggregations that they return to year after year. So I'd say it's a bit of a stretch. And importantly, for both of those lines of thinking, the overfishing one and the climate change one, we're presuming that hybridization is a relatively recent phenomenon, when in reality, it could have been happening for years and years and years, and scientists only just noticed it 10 or 15 years ago. In reality, we can't say with 100% certainty why sharks are hybridizing with each other, because it could literally simply be down to random chance. As in two genetically similar shark species, once upon a time, randomly came across each other, mated, and hey presto, you've got a hybrid who will mate again, and the genes will just spread further. As to whether we're going to start finding more hybrid sharks, I'd say it's almost a certainty, and I can't wait to see which ones we're going to get. I'd love a tiger shark, white shark combo, as lots of you enjoyed pointing out in that 3D graphic that I used in the Norfolk Island video a few weeks back. Although if you were listening in today's episode, you'll know that a cross between those two species isn't possible. <laughs> Speaking of that Norfolk Island video, you should definitely give it a watch here, by the way. In it, you'll find out why the tiger sharks there are just so big, and whether that's got anything to do with the fact that they've been fed cows for the last hundred years. I know. What are you waiting for? Give it a watch.